Good evening and welcome to the fourth annual PRISM Awards for Photonics Innovation. We have 28 finalists and nine winners that have transformed ideas into innovative products and hopefully revenue and success in the marketplace. So let's start the show. Category, this person is a technology entrepreneur and a venture capitalist who started his career as an economist and an investment banker in New York. He holds a Bachelor of Science and Master's in Economics from the University of Zimbabwe. He also has an MBA, cum laude, from Bond University in Australia. After a de decade in investment banking, he started Trump Venture Capital Group about 10 years ago, focused on the commercialization of South African technologies with global potential. He is what I would call smart money and is active in helping his portfolio companies go to market. In fact, I met him here a year ago after a panel on silicon photonics where he came to explore collaborations and go-to-market strategies with some of the people who are also speaking on the panel. His company, one of his portfolio companies, is developing one of the first CMOS-compatible integrated light sources for photonic chip-to-chip -chip communication using very novel technologies, some of which are being reported here at Photonics West this year. He is also actively working to establish QPower Corporation, a company working to commercialize a new type of gas-cooled modular nuclear reactor, a new generation that has the potential to provide emissions-free power without the risks of meltdown or weapons proliferation that's common in the more contemporary designs. His passion is to help people see innovation's role in wealth creation and to help inventors become innovators by understanding the economics of commercialization. Please join me in wel welcoming Wellington Shardahumbe. Well, I would be dishonest if I didn't confess that I am overwhelmed by this event. Just the palpable passion and uh, the incredible people represented and companies represented here. And uh, even though I haven't been working with SPIE for a long time, I have gotten to realize that actually there is a winner, an award winner, who is not on the list tonight. And that award winner is SPIE itself. <laughs> so uh, it is my pleasure and distinguished honor to be here tonight to present the award for the defense and security category, as Peter said. Optical technology has become a ubiquitous part of national defense. Today, the defense industry relies on the photonics industry for optical products of the highest quality for various purposes, inclusive of anti-reflective glass for airport control towers, laser glass for the world's most powerful lasers, telephone mirror blanks, aspheric lenses for rifle sights and binoculars, night vision filters, coated and glass filters for cockpit displays, lighting and laser protection, as well as various other optical components, systems, and sensors. The three finalists being honored tonight have distinguished themselves by adding to uh, this really long catalog that I have uh, non-exhaustively mentioned, and then reaching it with technologies that enhance intelligence gathering, surveillance, reconnaissance, as well as the detection of biohazards, lethal chemicals, and dangerous explosives. Safety and security are and will remain priorities, I believe, for the global community to, prosper, to posterity. The increasing integration of the global economy and community, welcome as it is, brings with it new challenges 
that place equally new and onerous demands on defense and security systems. So innovators in this field should not be worried. They should uh, know that they've got job security tonight because defense and security, I believe, will always need new technologies and therefore greater creativity. Fortunately, the global integration that I've just referred to has significantly broadened the talent pool. Today, novel inventions can come from anywhere. With inclusive enough search processes for new technologies, the results will not disappoint. Far less abundant, in my opinion, is the risk-tolerant capital required for successful research and development as well as commercialization. And scarcer yet is the requisite strategic discipline. This was tragically dramatized, in my view, during the dot-com period when Wall Street finally came to Silicon Valley only to do so in the manner and style of an inveterate Las Vegas gambler. This thought that all too often in the excitement of the new, uh, the new invention, science is emphasized at the expense of strategic discipline. As Carlota Perez, a Peruvian economist that I follow has observed, and I quote, conventional wisdom tends to see technology as a matter of scientists and engineers. Yet it is in fact very much a social and economic matter. The objective has always been to turn base metals into gold and not the reverse, end of quote. Only when technology demonstrates the level of maturity that would make it deserve to be regarded as a science with robust and discernible principles will technology commercialization, I believe, cease to be perceived as a gamble and get central rather than peripheral investor attention. And as Peter said, this is one of my passions. Personally, I've been impressed as I indicated with my opening remarks, by the degree to which SBIE is alive to this challenge, and I am sure that before long, a fitting program will be conceived and added to the agenda of future conferences. This is important because the symbiosis between innovation, capital, and strategy has driven economic growth since hoary antiquity. As William Bernstein observed, and I quote again, he says, economic growth rides in the cockpit of invention, end of quote. Therefore, the innovative ingenuity displayed by the three finalists being honored tonight is not only a valuable contribution to peace and security, but perhaps is also the antidote that the global economic recession requires. So who then are the distinguished companies in the defense and security category for 2012? Well, let's watch the screen. the other award presenters, I didn't cheat, so I didn't open this envelope before. <laughs> so it's a surprise for me as well. And the winner is Mobile Elizabeth Pathogen Detection. Uh, this is uh, Physical Optics Corporation. Thank you.
I can't believe we won it. <laughs> Guys, uh, this is very special uh, to me uh, and uh, for team at POC to win this thing. Uh, it's double special for me as a scientist who was trained in Soviet Union to build a safer world here in the United States. I'd like to thank SPAE and very talented guys uh, from Homeland Security who made this thing happen. Thank you very much. Real quickly, on behalf of Physical Optics Corporation, I want to thank SPIE for this uh, most distinguishing award. Uh, 26 years ago, our company, Physical Optics Corporation, was founded on a kitchen table by a uh, Polish immigrant's mother, uh, husband and wife team. And uh, 26 years later, we're standing here in this very distinguished crowd to accept this, uh, this award. So thank you very much. Thank you.